Hello and welcome everyone. So uh, I know that a subscriber of mine actually saw this with the notification. So if you are working on these labs and if you are working on anything for Python or anything for Snap or anything in programming in general and you want to see more of this content, please do like and subscribe. Uh, but with that being said, we're working on part two of lab 4.4 and the very first function that the uh, prompt wants us to work on is a function that we are calling all in one. What all in one does is it creates a function that will put all the shopping lists into a single uh, list using a for loop. So we're going back to using our loops inside of loops. So what I want to start with is a new list I'm going to put everything into. And you can see that new list is called new list. That's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. And I want to loop through the entire list that I'm given. So here you can see for i in range, uh, that is our pretty common function for when we want to go through, you know, an uh, indeterminate set of items that we know of. And um, that is going to be our shopping cart. And we are going to go through just the most basic upper level of that. But remember, I can't just say shopping cart because it's going to actually want to read off those items. I want to say len of shopping cart. So if my shopping cart has three lists inside of it, has three main elements and I want to loop through those. Then inside of that list or inside of that for loop, I also want to go through another for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste and I'm going to change I to J. I want to say for J in range and instead of saying len shopping cart, I want to go through len of the particular list that I'm looking at. So again, if I'm looking at this very first I, I'm looking at toothpaste, Q-tips and milk, which is three long. Um, if that next list was maybe a thousand members long, if I put uh, I here, it would allow me to loop through a thousand times. And then finally, for this, I'm going to say new list and to uh, add items to it, I'm going to say dot append. And I don't just want to append like the entire list of shopping cart at that particular time. I want to particularly or specifically, I should say, append the list item. So here I say new list dot append shopping cart IJ because I want to add the uh, thing at each item. So the first time I loop through this, I'm going to do toothpaste, then Q-tips, then milk, and I'm going to move on to my second list all in together. And I'm going to add milk, candy, and apples. Pretty straightforward, I think. I'm going to go ahead and copy all in one and put it down here, or it's already listed. And I also want to print the list inside of this, if I could type. I want to say shopping cart. Or actually, no, wait, we're not printing shopping cart. We're going to print new list. If I click run, you can see this is all one list compared to a three tiered list like you see here. And now for count Q tips, the prompt for this is that we simply want to count the number of times Q tips are included in our list. So I'm going to simply say uh, Q tip count equals zero. And this is actually a very common thing they'll go through. There's much easier methods as you get more experience in programming on how to do this, but we're going to go ahead and do it the most simple way. So I'm going to say for I in range, and you know what? I'm just going to copy what I had right here. For uh, I in range, and I'm going to say if, um, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of a little bit of this. Because I want to specifically look at shopping cart IJ, so the particular item or index that we're looking at is equal to, and just say Q dash tip. Then what do we want to do? Well, we want to increment Q tip count. And of course, our shorthand for incrementing is plus equal one. And so now I go and I loop through the first set of lists. And for every single list, I loop through its sub elements, which is going to be um, three for each of those. And I'm going to say if the shopping list sub element is equal to Q-tip, I want to actually count and I want to print Q-tip count at the very end. So let's go ahead and print that out, see what we get. You can see we get zero. That's because we're not looking at Q-tip, we're looking at Q-tips. Always find that most of the time it's not that my code or that the code is uh, you know, really bugging out or doing anything bad. It's mostly just the time that I did something wrong. Definitely always take a look at your code and definitely look at the intention rather than what you think it should do. Or I should say, don't think about the intention of your code. Think about what it actually does. Finally, our next code set that we're going to do is called drink more milk. And it's going to take each list that we have, which we have 
you know, we might say we have three separate shopping lists right here, maybe one for each of the members of our household. And if it doesn't contain milk, so you can see our first two contain milk, but our last one doesn't, we want to insert milk into the list. So I'm going to go and I'm going to go for the same thing. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste some of the code I already have. And it's simply going to loop through both sets of it. And instead, I'm going to say if milk in shopping cart uh, I J and what this is going to say is going to say if the string milk is in our shopping cart item I want to do something so what I want to do and the way that I did this before is for every single list every single time I iterate through the different lists I set milk count initially to zero so I set this little variable and then if milk is in that, I'm going to simply increment milk count. And since I'm checking this per list, I have this focus kind of in my four I uh, range, right? So I check something in here, but then I actually do something right here. So I'm setting milk count to zero each time. And I'm saying if I'm gonna say milk count equals to, to zero, I want to um, do shopping cart I dot append milk. So you can see right here, for every single different list I go through within my larger list, every single sub list I go through, I want to reset that milk count to zero because it might have been counted to one the last list we went through. So now if I change drink more milk down here, if I run that function, you can see toothpaste, Q-tips, milk, milk, candy, apples. Those both are exactly as they are up here. But then my very last list has four elements now, and that added item is milk. And excuse me if you can hear me burping. Um, finally, our last function is actually one of the easier ones. It says if you give a moose a cookie. And um, to do this, one of the things you're noticing me doing is I'm taking the for loops from each one of my previous uh, incarnations of these different definitions, right? These different functions. And it's because generally I'm doing the same uh, sort of um, operation on each of these where I'm looking through every single item. And if I'm looking through a double tiered list, this for I in range, uh, this layout you can see right here, these two for, for you know, something in range statements are very easy to use to do that with. And I know what I'm doing because I've looked at this before. But definitely think if you're going through a list of lists, you might need these double for loops each time. So in this final one, I'm saying for I in Rangeland shopping cart for J in range shopping cart, I want to say if, and the prompt here is that if the shopping cart item is equal to milk, I simply want to change that to milk and cookies. A little bit of a ridiculous prompt, but I like it. I'm gonna say uh, shopping cart IJ because I wanna interact with that particular sub item is now equal to milk and cookies, just like that. So you can, hear, you can see here, I'm gonna go ahead and print it if I can stop stuttering. And now in my very first two loops, I have milk originally right here, or my very first two sub lists, I have milk at the very end and then milk at the beginning. And I am saying toothpaste, Q-tips, milk and cookies, milk and cookies, candy, apples, right? So I'm swapping that out, I'm checking that sub item, and then I'm changing it. And that is functionally how you do the entirety of lab 4.4. Thank you for joining me on both these parts, and I hope that this helps you very much. Thank you guys, and have a good night.